welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do an update on the Ranger project. Also got a, another project here we're working on, this uh, 78 Ford. But anyway, main video today is on our EcoBoost Ranger. Get an update on it. Um, got about 1,600 miles on it and kind of, kind of go over what I've done to it recently. Kind of the good, the bad, and there are some issues, so the ugly. Um, but yeah, we'll... We'll dive into this, show you some of the stuff we got going on on it and what we still need to do to it. Um, and also, I guess it's kind of a prep video for uh, the duct tape drags. That's going to be down in Tucson the end of September. Uh, so the plan is to get this set up for some drag racing and take it down to the duct tape drags and run it and see how it does. So we'll dive into this. So a quick overview on this. Um, I don't know from last video if I mentioned it, but got some wheels and tires. Um, these are the Crown Vic wheels. I went and had them uh, powder coated. It's a uh, silver, I think it was called Armadillo. Um, so pretty much this doesn't need a clear coat on it. Um, and it'll stand up to outside temperatures, or not temperatures, but the UV rays and stuff and it's not gonna fade. Um, put on a 245 50R17 tire. So they're, they're nice and wide. Uh, I've driven this around a bit threw it in some corners and it's done pretty well. So got that matching front and rear. Um, not doing any burnouts on these. I don't want to tear them up. So we got burnout tires for that. Um, also got the grandpa canopy on here. Uh, help give it that uh, low profile look. For the interior, uh, did quite a bit on that. My parts truck that I bought for some the seats had pretty decent interior. Uh, got a carpet kit in here, which I need a vacuum out and find some floor mats for it um, but before this was like I don't know if this truck had a vinyl floor or not it's been a while since I tore it apart but there was no uh, really much interior on this so I was able to do full carpet these back plastics headliner um, this back fabric piece here in the trim um, and also door panels upgraded these a bit the other ones are just straight plastic so these are kind of a, a nicer uh, fabric and then also they have a a cubby hole down there. Um, did some sound deadener along the transmission tunnel and then made this uh, shift boot. Oh, there goes my light. But um, this shift boot I got on Amazon. I'll put a link in there and it's kind of glued it to this piece of aluminum, bolted down there. So it actually helps a lot. I drove it around without the carpet or that and it was a little noisy inside. So the carpet definitely helps the noise. And then no shift boot, there's just a bunch of uh, hot air rushing up through there. So that definitely helps there. Um, I think that's it for the interior. Um, but yeah, definitely makes it a lot nicer to drive. I've had some other modified rigs and they're just noisy and loud and not that enjoyable. I mean, it was great in high school, but I guess I'm becoming an old man. But anyway, so that kind of takes up the good on the interior. So I know some people are wanting numbers. Um, don't have everything everyone wants, but I did take this to the scales the other day. With the canopy on it, without me in it, it comes across at 3,100 pounds. So took the canopy off, it'd probably be a little bit lighter. So that's about right where I'm wanting it to be. Um, check the specs for just a basic EcoBoost Mustang 2016. They're right around 3,500. I don't know if that varies higher or lower depending on the, the trim level. Um, so we're at least uh, 400 pounds lighter than a Mustang, so that definitely helps out on the performance side. Uh, gonna be faster than just any apples apples tuned Mustang. This is gonna be faster because it's 400 pounds lighter. Um, and it had about, it wasn't 50-50 weight distribution, but it had about uh, 13 to 1400 pounds on the rear axle. So that's right about half, so it's not too front heavy. Um, gonna have good traction on the rear. Also, I did a miles per gallon test on it, and it got 27 miles per gallon. That was uh, highway driving with easy acceleration, but I was still doing like 75, 80 miles a gallon, 75, 80 uh, miles an hour, so it wasn't just putting around. So I got 27 miles per gallon. That's pretty good. Uh, with, I would say, spirited driving, I got about 24, 25, so still really good. Uh, one thing in the future that I do want to change is the rear end gear ratio. I went with the 410 uh, rear end ratio. That's too low. First gear in this thing is practically unusable. Uh, if I ever get around to that, I can go into the, uh, I'll 
touch into the whole ratios and all that stuff but if i had this to do it again i'd definitely find a rear axle with a 355 that's something i'm going to upgrade or change out would be put a 355 ratio in the rear it make first usable because right now you're practically starting in second um, it seemed like a good idea but which would have been a good idea if you're using an older transmission with the gear ratios with like four speed but this uh, six speed it has really low uh, first gear um, so and it's all close ratio but it's still good to drive but really first gear is not that usable um, but yeah so something to do in the future um, and then with that if I up upgraded the, or changed the rear end ratio you probably get improvements on the miles per gallon uh, but anyway we'll cut back to this and kind of dive into some issues I've been having Ooh. one of the issues I had I have a couple of um, codes pop up on the computer one is for an air intake leak uh, it's somewhere there's getting air past the throttle body on the other side. So what I did is I made up this contraption here, just kind of like testing the the um, intercooler and stuff. I put this on the intake of the turbo and pressurized, and I was able to find any um, boost leaks uh, along the way. And I found some more and tightened some stuff down. But one of the main issues I found is with this 3D printed throttle body spacer. I'll shoot a video in of that. But pretty much what was happening is the this was printed by my friend on a home uh, 3D printer, which is great, all that stuff. But the way it does it is it lays down the, the filament in small layers and stuff. Well, that creates uh, spaces between all the layers. And when I sprayed a Windex on there, it just foamed up. So it's just leaking air between all those layers. And that's on the vacuum side of the throttle body, so it's also sucking in air. So that means I gotta replace this with something that's not porous. So I went and got some quotes on getting one machined out of aluminum, and the cheapest one I got quote was like $1,500. The problem is with the inside radiuses and stuff, it needs pretty much a five axis CNC. So that was out. Well, I didn't really wanna dump $1,500 into a throttle body there. So what I got instead is another uh, 3D printed spacer and this one was on a high-end HP printer that does nylon and according to uh, the sales guy it's 100% solid or dense or whatever pretty much there's no it's not going to leak air so we're going to swap that in place of there and hopefully get uh, that issue resolved. Uh, the other issue which may not be a big issue but I guess it's more frustrating is I got a uh, error for the fuel pressure sensor. Um, it was just reading 100, 109 PSI. And I know with my regulator over here, it's set at 60, so there's something wrong with that. I went out and bought a new sensor because the, I guess they had an old style which were prone to going bad at the tone of like $75. Put that in, still the same issue. Well, it turns out Ford, in their infinite wisdom, decided to remove the wire on their harness that runs between this plug here and the ECU. So everything on the engine side is there, but there's just one wire not sending the signal back to the ECU. Um, so I, I jumpered that with this wire here, and it all worked. Uh, so now I'm just kind of, I've been back and forth with Ford trying to figure out if it's something that I need, if it's something wrong with their harness or what, but that's been like um, two weeks going on and still haven't heard anything back. That's definitely a uh, frustrating point uh, that I have with this whole harness that I spent, I've talked about before with other things, but spent good money on it. I mean, now they're upwards of $2,000 for this harness um, and you call for performance and you really don't go get anywhere. Um, the guy has to, pretty much the long story short is they didn't know the answer so they had to email to some engineer someplace to find out and he hasn't gotten back and it's just an ongoing hassle so and they couldn't they if they knew their stuff they could just tell me oh that is needed we'll fix that or no it's not needed just ignore it um, it would have been nice if the instructions said no it's not needed and you don't have to worry with it not only do I have to uh, buy a new um, sensor there but this whole menagerie here of getting this that uh, uh, tap there or an inline uh, fitting for that sensor has cost me probably a hundred bucks for this AN stuff and the 90 degree fittings and all that stuff 
so it hasn't been cheap just to incorporate that in it uh, so anyway um, that's that I'm gonna still wait back from Ford I so I, I ordered stuff from Mauser um, all the crimp ends which was a struggle to find um, but I have the stuff I'll put part numbers in the description um, so if I do end up putting that in there, I have the, the crimp ends to crimp on the wire and insert into the fitting. So I got that settled, but I don't know if I need it or not. But we're going to uh, ignore that right now and going to work on putting uh, this guy in here and hopefully that solves that problem. And once the main check engine lights are taken care of, then I'm going to get this tuned. I uh, already purchased a tune from Tune Plus, um, so they, I already emailed them. They said it's something they can do. So once we get that going, we'll start getting it tuned, um, getting ready to, to go to duct tape drags. Also, over here, i got some uh, extra tires. These are some Hoosier 28 by 1150 uh, R15 uh, DOT street, uh, well, they're not radials. They're actually bias ply drag tires. And then some uh, 15 by 10 uh, wheels. And they're big, but they do fit. This one took a little more balance than the other. So give me my uh, first time drag racing, but hopefully these tires will help out on that. Um, so yeah, we'll get this in there and uh, hopefully it fixes our issue. I got the new uh, throttle body spacer installed, uh, leak tested it, sprayed uh, soapy water on it, no leaks coming from there. I uh, pressure tested the whole system, made sure all the hose clamps were tight and there was no excessive boost leaks. Um, I'm still getting a little bit of an error code uh, for a vacuum leak. I disconnected the UPR catch can to see if something in that system might be loose. Uh, so we'll probably touch back on that in another video. But I think that's it for right now. Still waiting back from Ford for my low pressure fuel uh, sensor. Um, and also did a quick little radiator overflow down here. Simple Mountain Dew bottle. Works pretty good for that. So I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, going to go ahead and button this back up. Do some more uh, testing and figure out where that uh, intake leak's coming from. Uh, tomorrow I'm probably going to take it up to the Woodburn drag strip. Just get some uh, time in behind the wheel. Never been drag racing. You know, I did stuff on the street, not really drag racing, but anyway. Uh, but never actually at a drag strip, so that'll be a uh, first experience for me. Don't have it tuned yet, and not going to be running the slicks. Just going to go up there with the factory tune and the factory tires and get a baseline and also get some time in the seat going down the drag strip. Um, got a tune coming from uh, Tune Plus. Hopefully going to start on that the, uh, later today or tomorrow, working on that. So that'll probably be the next video is maybe going through the tuning process and then also maybe getting this back up at the drag strip uh, with some slicks on it and a full tune and seeing what it'll do. Catch you guys later.